Uh, I moved here from uh, northern Missouri 35 years ago to come to work for a little company called Airyvac. There were nine of us in the helicopter when I came to work. I, uh, when I uh, retired from them in January after 34 years, uh, we had 36,000 employees. Uh, my point there is uh, we grew a business that, that did two things. It did good for everybody, but it also became an economic engine. Uh, 400 people in West Plains have jobs that before Arivac did not, did not have a job. Good paying jobs with benefits. I, uh, good paying jobs with, with benefits. I think that with, with a little work, with a little work, we can get back to having good, good jobs with benefits. The average wage, the, the livable wage in, uh, in Oregon and Al counties is about $14 an hour. If you don't pay $14 an hour for the benefits, your, your employees are not making a living. So that's, that's what we need to have. Uh, I live uh, a couple miles over here on State Line Road, got 60 acres and 20, 20 cows and probably closer to being pets than they are cows. So. <laughs> uh, I know each one of them's name and they come up to me and, and, and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm Christian conservative, uh, I'm pro-life, I've been endorsed by the, uh, uh, by the Missouri Right to Life. Uh, I'm a uh, pro-Second Amendment, I'm a member of the NRA. Uh, I advocate for, for rural everything. Uh, I grew up in a small town of 2,000 people. I went 20 miles to high school. I went 20 miles to high school to graduate with a group of 70 people. And, it was the only, and that was the only high school in the county. So if you're talking rural, I grew up in a town of 100 people. Uh, I, I've always worked in rural areas. And then we worked, you know, that was what attracted me to Airy back, is what is in a rural area. Just because we are live, choose to live in a rural area doesn't mean we should be second class citizens to anything. My, my part was health care, and it shouldn't be second, uh, shouldn't be second class citizens because that goes to health care. I'm on the board of the Ozark Medical Center, uh, actually I'm serving as the treasurer right now. That's a gym when you get out there because uh, everybody know where Boonville, Missouri is? Pretty good sized town. Closed their hospital about three months ago. Oh. You know where Kennett, Missouri is? Same size as West Plains. They closed their hospital about a year ago. Oh my gosh. Okay. Ozarks Medical Center is in the process of the largest construction project under, ever undertaken in West Plains. 120,000 square feet medical office building and 20,000 square feet of a, a women's center. Okay. This is growth. This is growth. We can do that here, but we, we all got to work together, and we got to have somebody in Jeff City that's going to push. That's going to push for us. Uh, I'm a, fiscal, I'm a fiscal conservative. One of the biggest complaints that my employees had when they, when, when the, the upper management wanted to uh, uh, survey our employees, they said, "Well, he treats the company's money like his own." <laughs> and uh, uh, that, they were trying to cry about that, and uh, it, it actually got me a little bit of rage. Uh, so uh, it got backfired on it. But, but you know, I treat tax money. I treat tax money uh, just like it was my, just like it was my money. I'm not afraid to spend money. I'm not afraid to spend money, but it needs to be on something that we're going to get a return on, not just something we're going to give away. And I, I thank, I thank uh, uh, Kevin for, and his family for putting this together and inviting us and giving me the opportunity to do all of Thank you very much. So what you all, what your thoughts are on these bills that are getting passed with some of that small print, because this isn't the only bill that's been passed like that in any state. They get passed like that regularly. What are you going to do, or what are your stances on these type of bills that have that small print in there? First and foremost, we need to read the, we need to read the bill and make sure that it's there. And if, if it has those things in it, then we need to challenge that. And we need to bring that up on the floor when it's voted on. But a lot of bills are not, you know, by the time it comes to the floor and people are voting on it, uh, that's too late. It needs to be done at the committee level. This needs to be done at the committee level. 
I'm going to use my my power and influence that I've got so far with friends that I the friends I've made contacts that I've made within within the legislature to get on those committees that are important to people in the, the 143rd district. That that's what I I'm going to do. And if there's a bill there that has a problem, then maybe we need to start challenging it in court. Okay, I mean that's that, that's the end result is that's why we have that's why we have the executive, the legislative, and the judicial. So you're not afraid if push comes to shove. To I've, never do been, I've never been afraid to push anybody. <laughs> I've never been afraid to push anybody. And uh, like Frank said, I'm you know, I'm 66 years old. I don't need this job. Okay, you know, I'm, if I need this, if I need this, this job, I'd go after a lot better paying job than this. <laughs> so, for, for, the amount, for the amount of work. But, but uh, and uh, I'm gonna add one more thing, uh, Frank. Thanks. You guys, you guys know when the timeline is on this. I, I, don't, I don't know when the timeline on the on the on the senior center is. I, I don't know the answer on that. I do believe it needs to be opened on a, on a local, regional basis. If we don't have any new cases of COVID, then we need to start opening things back up. Okay. We, we know that the most susceptible population to, to COVID-19 is our elderly people. So we have to be we have to be extremely careful opening this back up to 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 all all of everybody. And I know my 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 wife and my widow that's passed away was the was the head cook at the senior center in, in West Plank. I know how valuable these senior centers are to to one your nutrition, which is very important, but just just as important is is the social aspect of being able to get together and do and it's been hard on everybody. It's been hard on everybody. But we have to we have to influence those people that are making those decisions. Okay. We can't let just the people and, and there's there's health reasons and I'm a nurse I'm a nurse by, by trade and I got a degree in biology so I understand a little bit about the virology of, of this disease. And, but we've got to be real careful in opening it back up. We're seeing examples of opening it back up now, Florida, Arizona, and Texas. Okay, which is where New York was a few years, a few months ago, and New York is now opening back up, and they're they're down to almost no deaths now. Do, do y'all feel like this uh, COVID-19 has been a little bit politicized? Oh, it's been politicized. It's been politicized horribly. The, the mask issue has been politicized horribly. It, uh, I, it should be a public health issue. I mean, it, it should be a public health issue. We should let the experts. You know, I, personally, personally, I think the person that has a PhD and the MD probably is a, has a little more insight into what's going on than, than uh, the other people that are making the lawmakers that are making it. Well, there's one more. Um, uh, I'm always been hearing the state board transmitting four or five ways to state. I've been, I just want to know, but Jack, oh, okay. or by, uh, by Frank, do you guys know anything about the state? Is the state one, state two, state three? I don't know specifics about them. I know that you know that 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 as things start opening up more, that it's another state and another state. But there are triggers along the way that say so many new cases, so many deaths, all of those types of things. That we do you believe that it's constitutional that a governor or a mayor, which has happened in the last, can come in and mandate that you have to wear a mask? There's no word in that Constitution of the United States that it says anyone has the right to tell you what you have to do. And if so, you believe it, you, are you going to enforce that and start fining people for not wearing a mask if they don't believe they need to wear it? I brought it up. <laughs> Well, it's going to be challenged soon. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing's going to be challenged soon. Uh, Springfield has just has just gone to to that. Uh, they're 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 regulating uh, outdoor gatherings, oh, yeah. outdoor gatherings of people. I, you know, I, I'm torn as a healthcare provider on that. I, I, I'm torn because the wearing the mask is not as much to protect you uh, from wearing the mask as it is to protect you know, the other people from you. This COVID is for I. I you know, I have to laugh whenever they, everything was shut down. I got bored, but my field was as bush off as I could get it. And, and so I became a contact tracer through uh, John Hopkins, uh, John Hopkins Medical School. 
the COVID itself is in it, you are in you are contagious two days before you show any kind of symptoms. Sometimes you never show any symptoms, but that asymptomatic person can pass that disease off. That's, that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point, well, the point, the point, the point is it's public it's a public health issue that says you you and, and, and it's going to be a and my issue is if I'm if I get within six feet of you, I'm taking the I'm taking your risk of that and, and I choose to whether I'm going to stay at home. That's where that's where you yeah, I, 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 I totally agree with you. You have no right, nobody has any right to tell me what I can wear and what I can't wear. No, but I can stay away from it. Right. 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 I can choose to stay away from it. When you can mandate this, when you can mandate this, that it's a public health problem, a gun can be mandated as a that's public a health problem. problem. Where do you stop? That's the point. You let it get started. You let it get started. I'm totally against the mask unless, you know. What is the premise of the idea that it's a public health problem? What is the premise of the idea behind wearing a mask? If I wear a mask, what does that do? It protect, it the main thing, the main, it, it has twofold. But the main purpose is to keep you from spreading the the, the uh, droplets, the okay, micro droplets so words, from someone else. If it that does, is a political line, I never heard one. Okay. If I'm wearing a mask, I don't care. I, it doesn't yeah, the green, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going with the guys with the PhDs and the MDs. So I'm sorry. But, well, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm, and, that, 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 for questions, sir. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I'm wearing a mask, right. I'm protecting you. The primary concern is the primary purpose is to protect me, but it also protects you somewhat. But the primary reason, the primary reason is to keep it from, keep you from infecting. Okay, somebody. if I if I'm infected, let's say I'm infected, I'm right. two days and I have a tiny symptom, and I'm infected, and I've got this mask on, and I breathe out, am I not breathing back in what carbon? You already had it. Right. Breathing back in. Yeah, but but it depends back in. on the, the quality of the mask. Okay. Okay. It depends what, on the quality of the mask. What am I exhaling besides those germs? Well, your 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 normal exhale has uh, uh, about. Uh, 8% oxygen, or uh, uh, not 8% oxygen, it's about 72% of uh, nitrogen and about 19% oxygen and then uh, about 3% carbon dioxide somewhere okay. to come up with it. But it, yeah, the droplet itself also carries bacteria and viruses. Right, right. so and I'm it, keeping that into myself. You're keeping it to yourself. Right. You're keeping but it to I'm yourself. Also breathing in that carbon dioxide? There, they've done studies on the car, on the mask with the carbon dioxide. There's no, there, there's the, the CO2 retention, the CO2 retention by wearing that mask is, is minimal. Thank you. Okay, we got all the mask questions answered. No. Where's your mindset on that? Living wage. Well, there's two, there's two issues here. There's a living wage and there's a minimum wage. A living wage is a, go, is a, is a calculated wage that says in order to own a home, own a car, raise a family, put them through college, that's how much money you need to make. Okay, that is our goal. That we want everybody to earn a minimum, uh, to earn a living wage. A minimum wage is if you work in you know, outside of food service to get tip, uh, jobs to get tips, is a wage that says you know everybody should make this amount. That should not. That a minimum wage job should never be a destination job. A minimum wage job should be my my 18 year old kids get these first job. That should be a minimum minimum wage job. Entry level job. Entry level, entry level job. If someone is going to make a minimum wage a destination job, we've got a problem. We, we've got a problem. And that's that's the problem that we're getting by raising the minimum wage up. When we raise the minimum wage up, all that does is raises the cost of everything else. It doesn't okay. accomplish it doesn't accomplish raising the minimum wage doesn't accomplish much. Okay, it just raises the, the cost of everything else up and it starts, it's, it, whenever you put a, everybody on a job scale, it starts compressing the lower end of that job scale right. if, you do, if you do that. So, you know, my, uh, I used to hire, 
I hired I ran an HR department of a thousand employees at one time, and and we went from we went from minimum wage jobs to to uh, CEOs, and there was a considerable break in that. But at the same time, when we did that, we gave people an opportunity to move away, move up from that that entry level minimum minimum wage job. You know, it's my and my boss used to tell me a a fry cook at McDonald's. There's a, there's a point that they reach their max that they reach their maximum efficiency. You can only cook so many French fries in in ten minutes, That's and so and I can only sell those French fries for X amount of dollars. So the only thing I can do if I have to raise that guy's wages up, I'm going to have to charge you more for the French fries. Yeah, yeah I started to say, you do. know, there's a big difference between what I mentioned about a living wage. Well, they get real, they get lumped together. Well, but they, shouldn't, they, they shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. The living wage and the minimum wage shouldn't be. Shouldn't be the same thing. You know, here in Oregon County, if you're in the cattle business or whatever, uh, I've raised cattle for 50 years, so I like to have minimum wage. <laughs> well, when I, where, oh, well, I anybody, you know, I like to, I like to have minimum wage. What it is now, for the hours. Well, well, you know, what I was told, what I was told, that if you go to farm, you better have a good yes. job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna back well, up just a second Frank before we answer up. another question. Frank here. needs to, uh, his opportunity. Frank. Okay. Frank needs That's his right. 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 Okay. Are we good? What can you do to, to help Oregon County get back? On on the map to reduce our sub uh, our ratio of these people what can you do to help us economically to put our community back where it used to be what what can you do through scope call or what 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 can we do and it's it's for any of you I'll, I'll jump in. We, we talked about it a little earlier. I warned you. Well, I, I know. I know. It, it, first, first and foremost, we need to have an educated workforce. Yeah. Uh, we have to have. We have these businesses will come here, but we've got to be able to present them a product mm -hmm. for them to come here. So we have to have an educated workforce. There are means to educate a workforce. What you know? What do you want as a business? Do you want to? Do you want an Amazon? Do you want an? Do you want an Amazon uh, distributor? Uh, we may we we may get. I don't think we get that, but I think we there's some 25 position jobs, uh, 25 position companies out there. One, we we, we got to have an educated workforce. We got to give them some. If you come here, we'll put people to work. Okay, we the the large percentage of substance abusers and people living on that are not the ones we're going to get. We're, we're going to have to go to the high school out here, and we're going to have to train these. To do that. We're going to have to make this road where people can bring products in and products out. Whatever that product is, we're going to have to have roads to do that. We're going to have to have other infrastructure. A business, a business today can't run without broadband. It just can't happen. It just can't happen, whether you like it or not. You know, your farm, your farm, uh, Christy Chin, who's the director of the Department of Agriculture, has a farm in Clarence, Missouri. You know, it's, it's like two rows of counties down. She, in order for her to change her grain mill, she has to get on the internet. To do it, she doesn't have enough broadband. She has to take that part off, send it off. Three weeks later, it comes back adjusted. Okay, we we can't, we can't operate that way. We have to have we have to have, to have the rural broadband. So we need, and then at the same time, we need the state to come in here and help us out with our economic development. We can't offer the things to help. We can't offer utility utility breaks. We can't offer all of those types of things. The state needs to come in and. It's not people. been fair for Oregon County. It's, it's not been for Howe County, and we're getting pushed around. And if y'all don't do something about it, we're going to cease to exist as a community. Well, absolutely. I'm not that folks. I, at one time, I, I have to admit it, one time, I said, let's, let's put the jobs in West Plains and make this a bedroom community. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. It, won't work. I, it, it was explained. It won't work because they're going to buy everything when they're at work. We, and, 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 and,